Hi there, I'm Jamie Taylor. Welcome to Your Health Matters, brought to you by Kingman Regional Medical Center, your not-for-profit community-owned hospital. Our program focuses on health issues relevant to you. We've got healthcare professionals here to help answer your questions. My guest today is Dr. Kathy Nagel, our new oncologist that just recently joined the KRMC team. I hope you'll stay tuned after these messages and join us. Welcome back to Your Health Matters. My guest today is Dr. Kathy Nagel, a new oncologist who's just joined the KRMC team. Thanks for joining me today, Kathy. Thank you for asking me to be here, Jamie. <laughs> We're excited to have you here at KRMC. You know, we've um, got a beautiful cancer center, but we were missing an oncologist, mm -hmm. so it's awesome to have you join us. I'm thrilled to be here. It's a great <laughs> yeah, team. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, share with me a little bit about your background. Where did you go to school? Well, I went to, I'm an osteopathic physician. I went to school at Midwestern University in Chicago. I was born and raised in Chicago and uh, did my training there as well. All right. Mm -hmm. And Midwestern, is that's the hospital or the school that we partner with our teaching program that's, as well, that's right? That's right. There's another campus in, Ar in Glendale uh -huh. in Arizona. So it's exciting to be around the other uh, DOs here, learning here in the emergency department and family medicine. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now, how long? And I said you were new, but you've actually been here a few months. Right. So when, did, right. when did you come again? July 11th was the first day. Oh, right. You got here right for the heat <laughs> of the summer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Of course, exactly. you don't have the humidity that you do in Chicago. Right. Oh, it's beautiful. It's you're liking so beautiful. it? Oh, I love it. Good. I I'm glad it. to hear that. I and your it. husband? Is thrilled. Good. Yep. Now, he's from Chicago he's as well? He's from Chicago, retired, okay. and his number one state he wanted to retire to was Arizona. Oh, right. Well, and I'm everything glad we worked could together. make his dream come true. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so, family background? You have siblings back I in Chicago? I do. I have one brother from Chicago and okay. I have four children that all live in Chicago okay. and uh, love the West Coast. They, they used to have friends out here and come out here frequently so looking forward to them coming, coming out visit. and seeing. Very yep. good. Well yep. you may be surprised you know when I moved here from the Midwest and we, my husband and we didn't have any family here mm -hmm. and now half of Kingman seems to be our family. Uh, They've all followed us. Oh that's, so nice. <laughs> that's nice. So you might, they might surprise you especially <laughs> if we have a couple of bad winners in yeah. Chicago you know right oh Kingman's not so bad that's true that's true that's true <laughs> well as i said you're our new oncologist mm -hmm. here at krmc and we're going to watch a little video that oh. was came from mayo uh, mm -hmm. called medical edge mm -hmm. and it's a story about mort krim i believe he's a famous newscaster mm -hmm. and his battle with cancer so let's watch okay, that great. together He's been a national TV news correspondent and a beloved anchorman. Mort Krim covered news for decades. Over the years, he's seen everything from the first landing on the moon to political unrest in other countries. But perhaps his most challenging assignment wasn't while he was on a story in a dangerous place, but during his own personal battles with cancer. That's one small step for man. Covered the, the first moon landing. One giant leap for mankind. Looking at my photo gallery. A tour of Mort Grimm's Wall of Fame gives a glimpse right. into the many people he's interviewed throughout his years as a journalist. Michael Jordan, and that's Bill. Ted and Charlie Osgood and I uh, shared an office in, at ABC Radio. Mort was a national correspondent during a very tumultuous time in our nation's history. Corresponded also with the Vietnam War. Well, I'm not a crook. With the beginnings of Watergate, with uh, uh, the campus riots with the assassinations of Bobby Kennedy, Martin Luther King, uh, Jack Kennedy. News 4 tonight with Mort Grimm and Carmen Harlan. Plus, he was a well-loved TV anchor in Detroit. Good evening, and it's a very good evening for Detroit Tiger fans. And parallel to his passion for getting the story is one for flying. Mort's also a pilot. I love the planning. I love the, uh, I love the takeoffs. I love the en-routes. I love... Uh, being in touch with the controllers. I love the scenery. I love the operating the machinery. Uh, I just love flying. It's just in my blood. Ever since he was a kid. I was building model airplanes when I was eight or nine years old. Well, that's a teeny weeny airliner. For the most part, Mort's life as a newsman and pilot has been smooth. Only once can he remember a flight that was, well, pretty scary. He was with his wife, Rini, en route to Vegas. And we got into some of the roughest turbulence that I've ever experienced. The couple also hit turbulence with diagnoses of cancer. Rini had um, breast cancer twice. It wasn't as difficult as I'd anticipated. I had had uh, prostate cancer, treated at Mayo successfully, surgically, 
and then I had colon cancer. Both were treated successfully at Mayo Clinic. Rini and Mort are now cancer-free. We just kind of thought, you know, these, this is just another pothole on the road of life, and we'll get through it and survive it and go on. But the experience has changed both of their lives. They have a strong faith and believe in the power of a positive attitude. We can't control the wind. We can only control the set of our sails. And I really believe we can't control what happens to us. I couldn't stop the cancer from happening. Uh, Rini couldn't stop her breast cancer. What we do have control over is our attitude toward those things that happen, our determination to make the best of life, our determination to enjoy life, to make every day as much as possible a good day. Mort's latest story is music. He's starting a jazz band, and every day he's thankful for a life that's full of melodies made from the love of family, flying, and great adventures in the newsroom. That's all I know. <laughs> right now, Mort is working on a new book and a film about his life. For Medical Edge, I'm Vivian Williams. So the big C, that's a scary word it sure for people. Is. It sure yeah. is. And you're their, like their knight in shining armor that helps them mm -hmm. in that battle. Mm -hmm. right. Being diagnosed with cancer is a life-changing event, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Um, my goal in life always with all my patients is number one, to educate them. And to the more information that they have, the better they're going to understand their disease and the less fear that they'll have. Right. And um, if they walk out and, and sigh and actually say, you know, I feel okay, I know yeah. that I've done my job. Excellent. So it's more than treating the body. Oh, absolutely. That's, it's the whole person. Right. And, and it's mind. also about te treating their families. You know, you're mm -hmm. going to have all the families feel different about the cancer than just the patient. Everyone has their own fears about of the treatment options and about the fear of perhaps this may be a terminal illness and not all cancer is terminal. Right. And that's right. so important. We know so much about so many cancers now. And the cancer today is not what it was 10, even ago. five years ago. And, uh, and that's an exciting field. it's always kind of evolving, Absolutely. right? With all of the um, new training or the technology and research that they're doing. Yes makes a huge difference Absolutely. and of course early detection obviously is very Correct. important. Correct. Now I think from what I've seen that we have a pretty awesome team in the mm. Cancer Center that kind of helps that whole package as well. Phenomenal. When you come to KRMC for your cancer care, you're not just seeing me as an oncologist or the radiation oncologist, the two doctors. Uh -huh. Naturally, of course, the doctors are the core center of the teams. But we have from the front desk all the way back down to our nurses, the most outstanding people you could ever imagine. That's and great. all of them are committed to making the best care for patients. And it's when you come to our center and you realize the comprehensive care that you get from every angle, from patient advocate to dietary to nurses to just someone talking with you, mm -hmm. you realize that this isn't just about the doctor and patient. Yeah. And it makes my job easier too because then I have a whole team behind me to help sure. me help the patient get through what they have to get through. Absolutely. That's mm. great. And well, so for instance, nutrition. Okay, mm. you mentioned you have a dietitian. Yes. What does Di dietary have to, how does that help fight? Sure. Well, as, as patients are going through their chemotherapy, they're, they're, they may not be able to t you take certain foods that they had oh, before. For sure. example, orange juice may bother their mouth because their mouth is sore, and so, but they don't know that. So, mm -hmm. Or they need more protein in their diet to help their immune system fight the disease more. Okay. So our dietitian is able to talk with them about those types of things. Great. And uh, so it works out well. And. Um, and it, it, a lot of times the families want to know that information too because the families want to be able to help their loved one. Sure. And so we're able to help the patient's family by saying these are the foods you prepare that are easier for them. Great. And uh, so it's, it works out okay. nice. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned patient advocate. Yes. I think that's Joe Stevens, Yes, right? Joe Stevens, <laughs> phenomenal team member. And Joe Stevens is just everything that I could ever ask for. And actually one of the reasons why I came here is I thought if anybody cares the hospital cares enough to have Joe Stevens. Yeah. They got to be a great place. That's true. We are blessed and, to have him. Yeah. On our and team. Joe helps with things um, such as social issues that the patient may need. Maybe they need something for transportation. We have so many people in the area where their spouse is ill, their caregiver to their mm -hmm. spouse, yet they themselves are sick. Wow. And and how do we take care of those people? 
um, so that the patient can get care even though they're a caregiver. Mm -hmm. And so he helps with all those things and he's just a phenomenal person. That's phenomenal. great. So. Well, and then we have a new position. We're just starting oh. the patient navigator, yes. the breast cancer navigator that I think is going to be an awesome part of the oh, team yes. as well. I'm right? very excited about this. So okay. what will happen then is right from the very get-go that a uh, person that has been diagnosed with the breast cancer will have kind of a friend, mm -hmm. a friend to walk them through the and explain things that are going on so that the biopsy needs to be done that then you'll see this doctor and the doctor's role is this and that this is what will happen so that they always have someone to call and because so oftentimes patients don't want to call a physician's office because sure. they're afraid they're going to bother the doctor and they don't want to be a burden but that person will give them just a friend and it'll be wonderful asset really That's wonderful great. yeah we're excited to mm -hmm. have that position right. available that was thanks to a grant that oh, we got from the breast Cancer Foundation, so that's awesome. It is amazing. And then your nurses, how many nurses are there? We have two nurses, two nurses? Okay. and just absolutely wonderful people. And, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't hear from my patients when oh, they say, I don't know what I would do without <laughs> our Sarah and, and our Denise. Yeah. And, you know, they just, uh, it's a it's a team. You mm -hmm. can't do this alone. Right. In this. And, you know, oftentimes, I'll be honest, people say, how do you do what you do? And it's because I have people that work with me that love what they do yeah. so much. Yeah, support. You know, Right. Well, and I think that's another thing, too, you have is the support groups right, exactly. for both the caregiver mm -hmm. and the patient, right. right? They're kind of separate, two it's, different support yes. groups. Yeah, people are going through different things and, sure. and different times. I always encourage families to come with the patient when they can mm -hmm. um, because that's a big part of this. And it, you have to know as a physician that if the patient's family is stressed, that my patient's care will be affected. Sure. And so you have to treat, it's everyone that you have to treat. Right. And, um, and it works well that way. Well, and for families too, it's scary. Not mm -hmm. only, I would think, not only that they're, you know, the danger of losing their loved yes. one, but it, of course, there's genetics involved mm -hmm. too. That's so right. if mom or dad has this, am I going to get Correct. that too? So I'm sure you have those kind of questions. Right. Absolutely. That Absolutely. you have to answer as well. Absolutely. I know that the front door staffy, but I mean everybody that uh, we've talked about that team. You mm -hmm. walk in and they're 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 always there to greet you right. and. And it's a beautiful facility. Oh, now, it's wonderful. Do you do, I think you do things for blood disorders too, yes, right? That I'm aren't also necessary. a hematologist. Okay. And a blood, so it can be what we call benign heme. Benign heme meaning blood. Okay. And benign meaning, of course, not a cancer, but uh -huh. anemia, for okay. example. Many people have anemia, so mm -hmm. I treat anemias and uh, bruising issues with platelets and things like that. But So everything's not a cancer that walks through the, big, right. the door with the big C <laughs> on the front. Yeah, right. And that's kind of frightening for some people who sure. aren't being treated for a cancer. They think, why do I have cancer? Nobody told, told me about it. No, that's that would be a scary thing, yeah, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. And so I didn't even, I guess, realize that, mm -hmm. that we treat all of those types oh, of things there. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk a little bit, probably, uh, well, you couldn't start talking about the technology that mm -hmm. we have there. I know we have our IMRT, is right. that right? IMRT. Okay. So IMRT is a radiation oncology treatment that's given, uh, radiation has done a lot of different changes over the last 10 years, 15 years. Years ago, when people got radiation, they got radiation to a specific area of their body and be every like tissue, whole, right? every tissue, if you, for example, if a breast was, mm -hmm. uh, ra you had radiation, you were radiating the heart, the lungs, everything, right in that wow. area. But now, the technology behind radiation is guided by a computer. Mm -hmm. And so the computer delivers doses of radiation trying to avoid those tissues that you're only doing the area that needs to be treated. Wow, and excellent. That's a very very expensive equipment mm -hmm. very advanced um, but the patient suffers less and from it and also better delivery of radiation Great. to that area and that's what's done okay. in that radiation oncology side yeah um, and then on the chemotherapy side you know not all people even get chemotherapy chemotherapy is a liquid medicine that's mm -hmm. what the word means chemo it means liquid and it's a liquid medicine that goes through a, a, a port generally and uh, it's a vessel a device that we put it in and, um, you know, they also get other treatment. There are or oral medications that people take for cancers, okay. and p most people don't realize yeah. that. Well, that's, we'll um, we're going to take a little break, okay. and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about that. Stay tuned, because we've got more information for you.